Forget about the U.S.-led effort or any led effort. Dr. Alan Cooperman is back with us, associate professor in the LBJ School of Public Affairs. He said we don't need an effort in Libya. No how, no way, I guess. Well, you know, sum that up. <laughs> so long as uh, Muammar Gaddafi is not deliberately massacring, massacring civilians, so long as what he's mainly doing is fighting against the rebels that mm -hmm. are trying to overthrow him, then our interfering would probably make things worse, not better. So forget the no-fly zone. Forget any military intervention. The no-fly zone is not going to stop the war. What it's going to do is encourage the re rebels. They're going to say, fantastic, the international community is on our side. Let's rev up our rebellion. And we know what the response to that's going to be. Gaddafi is going to rev up his counterattack. And the people who are going to suffer are the civilians who are going to be caught in between. So if, 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 we, if what we want to do is kill more civilians, then we should do a no-fly zone and encourage the rebels. You made a point in the break when we were talking about this. this is, you know, you're not coming at this from a new angle. You've studied this and made this your life's work. What should the international response be then? The international response should be, first of all, to make clear to Gaddafi that we won't intervene unless he starts massacring civilians. And if he does start massacring civilians, we will intervene. That's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is we should work quietly to try and see if we can get him out of the country by negotiating, for example, asylum in a third country and saying that the folks underneath him can have a share of power going forward. If the, if the folks underneath him have a stake in the future, then they're less likely to just massacre people. But if we say there has to be regime change, then the folks are going to fight to the very last Libyan, right. as Gaddafi has said he would do. I tried to make the analogy with Egypt. You say it's totally false. We have two different things going here. The, the difference is that in Egypt and Tunisia, we had peaceful resistance movements. And peaceful resistance movements don't provoke massive retaliation against civilians. And we saw there was basically a peaceful transition of power. The difference in Libya, there's several differences. First of all, it's an armed rebellion. Uh, and so what we're doing by President uh, Obama or Secretary of State Clinton voicing support for this is we're actually encouraging civil war that kills a lot of people, first of all. Second of all, in Egypt and Tunisia, there was really massive widespread support for regime change. And in Libya, it's not clear that that's true. We have more of sort of a regional civil war where the East and the West are fighting against folks in the capital who actually support Muammar Gaddafi. So they're, they're very, very different situations. But most important, we should support peaceful, nonviolent resistance movements. We should not support rebellions. That just gets more people killed. Is it too late to convince these then rebels, lay down your arms and try a different tack here? We, we need to be talking to them quietly, explaining that, and we need to stop getting them excited and emboldened by talking about all the intervention we can do. We've got sea forces, naval forces going there. We talked about jamming Libyan communications. We said Gaddafi has to go. We said he's going to go to the International Criminal Court. There's even folks who's talking about uh, providing weapons to the rebels. We have to stop doing that. We have to calm these folks down, not rev them up. And again, and you and I had talked about this, it's the old be careful what you wish for, Saw. You're not sure, even if it's rebellion successful, what Libya is going to wind up with. Absolutely. I mean, these, we, we sort of romanticize these sort of rebellions. We think they're all George Washington. And uh, a lot of the times they're not George Washington. They're more uh, uh, Ahmadinejad or something like that. And so even though there is a lot of, there is, uh, you know, a decent amount of opposition to Gaddafi from the average folks in, in Libya, uh, if this rebellion succeeds, it may well be taken over by the extremists within uh, the rebels. And there are folks, Gaddafi says it, and it's actually true. There are radical Islamists that are part of this rebellion. And if the rebellion succeeds, they may well take it over. And, and you know, Gaddafi he really used to be an enemy of the U.S., but lately he's been an ally. He's helped us against al-Qaeda. He's given up his weapons of mass destruction. And so the great irony is if we support this rebellion and it succeeds, we may turn Libya from a friend into an enemy. What do you see, then, with this? Uh, unfortunately, what I see from uh, President Obama is not really strong leadership. Uh, basically, what he said is, we're going to let the Europeans uh, do this. And the Europeans are making all this noise about supporting the rebels, but they can't really do it. Right. The folks who can really do it are the United States. So we're being pulled in. And instead, what I think we should do is we should say, we're not going to get pulled in. Uh, we are not going to support these rebels unless there's massacres. And then if there are massacres of civilians, then we should intervene whether or not the Europeans want 
uh, want to do so or not. Uh, we should not allow another genocide. We should not allow another Rwanda to take place and say, well, we're not going to help because the Europeans don't want us to. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm all for multilateralism, but uh, if, if it comes to actual you know, massacres and genocide, then I think we have to put aside multilateralism and protect innocent victims. Agreed. Dr. Alan Cooperman, LBJ School of Public Affairs, always good to get his insights on these things. Wish we had more time, but he's always willing to come back and visit with us. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Appreciate it.